Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today in this video guys I am going to do a quick review of this Runcam Racer 3 FPV camera for your drones. Also in this video guys I am going to do a quick unboxing going through some of the technical specifications. So ensure that guys you watch this video till the end so that you do not miss out on any important information or instructions that I have to share. Before we move further guys if you are new to my channel and not yet subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so that you get the notifications for my new videos. Let's get started. So guys before we see some of the technical specifications let's quickly unbox this Runcam Racer 3 camera guys and see what are the contents inside. So whenever you purchase this Runcam Racer 3, it comes in this cardboard box with the branding of Runcam onto the top. Onto the side guys, there is a barcode information and it says it is a Racer 3 BL L18 made in China and the condition is new. On to the other side guys, power input that it can take is from 5 volt to 36 volt, lens is 1.8 mm focal length and SKU number is Racer 3 BL L18. Some of the safety and disposable instruction that is what is there on to the sides guys. That is all you have on the top of the box guys. Let's quickly unbox this and see the contents inside. So when you first open the box guys you see there is a welcome card that came along with this with a branding of run cam on the top. Inside guys you see there is the mode of operations in this welcome guide guys so if you guys want you can go through it guys so on to the back side guys you have a link for the user manual in the websites if you want you guys you can download those information so for now guys that is all that is there on this welcome card guys i will keep the welcome card aside so here in the box guys you can see there are two compartments onto the sides onto this side guys you can see there is the camera itself guys it comes in this foam based packaging guys so as to prevent it from any damage during the transport guys so let's take out the camera so this is your camera itself guys i will keep this aside for now and see what else is there inside this box guys now let's open this and see what it came with so here you can see guys it comes with some of the attachment that we will see in detail let's keep that aside too so here you can see guys in the box there is nothing else so let's keep the box aside and see the components one by one so let's see the accessories that came along with the camera guys quickly So guys here you can see it comes with some small size M.2 screws to mount this camera onto your drone frame guys and then it comes with the bracket as well so as to be able to attach this camera onto the bracket and then your bracket can be attached to your drone frame and then in addition to that guys it comes with a six pin jumper cable that is there so you can see guys uh, there is a six pin micro JST that it comes with so as to be able to connect the pins which are there on the back side of this camera guys so that is what it came inside the box guys so here you can see onto the mounting bracket guys it comes with a hole with metal threading guys which is also something really nice and very nice build quality guys so here you can see guys the top two holes are for mounting the camera guys so as to be able to hold the camera onto this mounting bracket and then using these three holes you can mount this camera holder onto your drone frame so that it has a flexibility to move and you can control the tilt of the camera uh, depending upon the type of frame that you're using so and also guys as you can see the screws came along with it guys so as to be able to mount the camera onto this bracket that came along with it and also the screws so as to be able to mount this bracket or camera holder onto your drone frame so it is a nice sturdy made plastic bracket that it came with guys as you can see it comes with nice metal threading onto the sides for mounting it onto your drone frame so let's keep this aside guys so guys before we see the technical specifications of this camera let us look at the physical specifications as well as you can see guys this camera body is made out of plastic here and onto the back side as well guys here you can see the screws which are mounted uh, to close the circuitry inside guys which is really nice guys it is very sturdily built as you can see onto the top guys it is made by Runcam and the model is Racer 3. Something very unique about this Racer 3 is it is made for high speed camera guys so the latency or the video latency for this camera as you can say is around 26 milliseconds only so it is really one of the fastest camera available as of now in the market for high speed FPV guys. So if you are a FPV racer so I would highly recommend to buy this camera because it has the lowest latency possible. Onto the side guys you can see there is a M.2 mounting holes guys so as to be able to mount this 
this camera onto your drone frame or onto this bracket that came along with this guys also guys here onto the camera you can see the holes are reinforced with metal so as to be able to hold the screws really tight and mount this camera very sturdily and securely onto your drone frame or on this mount guys here you can see guys this plastic mount guys all you need to do is insert this from the top align the holes from the side guys so as to be able to tighten the screw that came along with this one so as to be able to put it on this bracket so that the bracket holds the camera and then your bracket itself can be mounted onto your drone frame using one of these three screw holes that came on this mounting bracket guys so guys if the space for mounting the camera on your drone frame is really large and you cannot fit this camera directly and by screwing the holes directly here or you need a flexibility to move this camera and adjust the direction using the two holes mount that you have possibly on your drone frame guys you will be able to use this bracket to do both either to increase the footprint of your camera or to add the functionality to tilt and manage the angle of the camera onto your drone frame so this bracket guys duals the role for mounting the camera or adjusting the angle of this camera onto your drone frame guys so this is something really nice guys that it came along with in addition to that guys onto the top you can see it has a lens it comes with a nice lens cover onto the top so as to prevent your lens from damage or scratches or possibly dust at the time of storage of your drone as well so this is also something really nice as you know guys the focal length of this lens is 1.8 mm and field of view is 160 degree so it is a wide angle camera guys and it has a shorter focal length so shorter focal length guys helps you to focus a shorter distance object as well nicely onto your camera guys which is also something really nice guys it is a 100 tvl camera guys so it is not a full hd it is lesser than full hd guys but later in this video guys i will tell you what those specifications means and how does it impact your camera quality and everything in detail so ensure that you watch this video till the end so in addition to that guys let us quickly look at the pin diagram onto the back side guys here you can see guys the pin diagram here you can see you have 5 volt and ground to power this camera it can take a voltage input from 5 volt to 36 volt which is also something really nice and then you have a video output pin guys here which will be outputting the video signal that is coming out of this camera that you can put it onto your flight controller for osd or to your dvr transmit the video directly using your vtx transmitter so that is also something really nice in addition to that guys very unique about this camera is you can power this camera using v bat voltage as well so it can take around 4s to 6s batteries so as to be able to power this camera directly from the battery voltage which is also something really nice and it is possible on this camera you can see you have ground and menu and then rx and tx so guys you have an option to control this camera menu using the external osd by using the function of mng using the tx and rx pin mode on this fpv camera guys you will be able to control the menu option directly from the uart from your flight controller which is also something really nice guys so it has a dual mode of operation and you can switch between the joystick and the uart operation by shorting these two pins together at the time of start which will change the mode of operation but if your camera guys do not have an option to connect directly to uart you only have menu or and ground or osd or ground on your camera guys you will be able to use an external module made by runcam called runcam adapter which you can use to connect it to uart and then from the uart you will be able to connect the osd menu here onto your fpv camera to control the menu option for this camera you do not need that module because it has a dual mode operation right inbuilt on this camera which is also something really nice guys which is done by runcam racer 3 guys so guys this is something very unique and nice about this camera which i wanted to point out guys so that is it about the pin diagram guys now let us quickly see the technical specifications and features which this camera has to offer so as per the technical specification goes for runcam racer 3 guys I will be explaining in detail what these technical specifications means later in this video guys. So let's first go through the technical specification and see what it has to offer. So the image sensor that it supports has Super WDR CMOS sensor which is the image sensor that this Runcam Racer 3 supports. So it has a focal length of 1.8 mm whenever you buy a Runcam version with field of view of 160 degree and it has 2.1 mm focal length when you buy this model with field of view of 145 degrees. 
It supports both screen aspect ratio 4.3 and widescreen which is 16 by 9. So the color system that it supports is NTSC and PAL both switchable. It has a mirror and flip functionality which is also available so that you can mirror the image and flip the image right from the camera. So it is irrespective of in which direction or orientation you install this camera you will be able to mirror and flip which is also something really nice. It has an integrated OSD which is on screen display which is also something really nice one touch scene setting so it has a default scene settings which is personal light tracks outdoor indoor cloudy and twilight depending upon the lighting condition you have these presets that you can select and improve your image quality the signal to noise ratio is 50 db which is also something really nice has electronic shutter so you cannot control the shutter speed on this camera which is always automatic the minimum illumination at f 1.2 aperture is 0 0.01 lux which is also something really nice guys the wide dynamic range that it supports is super wdr it has both day and night support so you can use this camera both in day and night lights it has a menu control so it supports dual type of menu control both joystick and UART control switchable so you can see on the right side it has both menu option and TX and RX so you can control by joystick and also you can attach this camera to UART to control the menu options. The input power supply that it supports is 5 volt to 36 volt and the current requirement for operation of this camera is 110 milliampere at 5 volt and 40 milliampere at 12 volt. So these are the technical specifications of this run cam racer 3 guys. Now let us look in detail what those specifications means. So normally in the market guys you will see different types of camera with different types of menu options. Here you can see the Nano has 5 volt ground and video input. It does not have menu option. So you will not be able to control the brightness, contrast or any other default settings here on this camera as it does not have a menu control option. Whatever is inbuilt in this camera is all automatic and then you will not be able to control the parameters. So this kind of camera guys will be able to supply the power by 5 volt and ground then you have a video output that will ultimately will go to your VTX transmitter or to your flight controller via OSD to your VTX transmitter to transmit the video signal. So that is how you use this Runcam Nano 2. So here you can see there is another version of uh, Runcam Racer Nano 2. Here you have 5 volt and ground and video output and then you have a menu option here guys. So here guys you will have the menu option that you can control via joystick. So here there is a third version of camera that you can see you have VCC and ground and video ID. So VID is normally your video output pin. VCC is your 5 volt supply or more and then you have the ground. So these are the basic operation that you have common in all the camera. Here you can see you have OSD and ground. So you have on screen display inbuilt. So using the OSD menu guys, you will be able to control the parameters. You can either use the joystick or if you have an OSD control inbuilt on your flight controller, you will be able to control the menu options right from the flight controller. So the fourth variant of the camera that is available in the market is like this. You have five volt ground and video. This is the standard. So for power supply, ground and video output, then either you can supply five volt to 36 volt or you can use VBAT to power this up, which is also something really nice. And then you have ground and menu or TX and RX. So either you can use the joystick to control the menu options of this camera or you can use the free UART on your flight controller so as to be able to control the menu functions. So it has dual option guys which is available in this camera which is also something really nice. So guys if you do not have a menu control inbuilt on your flight controller you can use a spare UART to control the menu options. So this is an extra feature added by this Runcam Tracer 3. Also guys the last one as you can see is also very similar instead of OST you have here the menu option it basically means the same but it has a labeling different so you can power this from 5 volt to 36 volt ground and video output and then you can use the joystick to control the menu options on this Runcam Phoenix 2 camera. So guys any camera which has menu option OST option or like this menu and ground you can control via OST or if you have an OST functionality inbuilt on your flight controller then only you will be able to use the menu option to control the parameters or image quality of this camera. So these are the camera menu types which are available as of now in the market. Let's see the next functionality. So these are the camera control or external OSD which are available as of now in the market. So here you can see guys these OSDs are basically used to navigate the menu option. 
so select the different option and change the parameters so either you have this five button options so you can see the center one for ok and then moving left right top and bottom to navigate the menu or you have a central button that you can toggle to move front back left right and center to select so these are the two types of ost which are available as of now in the market on the right side guys you can see how it is connected onto the camera so if you have in a menu options or an ost option you can connect menu and ground onto your ost via the camera or the junction pin that is there onto the front so that you will be able to control the menu option you can put this ost on top of your drone frame so that it stays fixed or you can optionally connect this osd whenever you are required to change the parameter so either way you can use this camera control so as to navigate through the menus which is available on your camera so that is how you connect the camera control guys so here you can see 165 degree field of view and 145 degree field of view you have a wider area that it is covering but at the same time guys you can see if your camera does not have a field flattener inbuilt you will have more curvature in larger field of view than you have in the smaller field of view so there is a trade-off guys so if you want to make it more real guys either you need to buy an expensive camera that uses the field flattener to flatten the image with the wider field of view then you have on the smaller field of view but you can see the same location you have wider coverage in wider field of view than the smaller field of view so that is what it means whenever you buy a larger field of view camera than a smaller field of view camera the second specification goes is the sensor size guys so whenever you say you have 1 by 1.8 inch sensor that normally means the diagonal size of the sensor so larger the size of the sensor guys better is the image quality and you have smaller pixelation so it will be more clearer image with the larger image sensor so by thumb of rule larger the sensor larger is your field of view so as you can see it is a ratio guys it is 1 by 1.8 so normally what they mention on the specification is only the bottom part so as a thumb of rule larger the value smaller is the sensor so smaller the value larger is the sensor so smaller value of this sensor size whenever they mention it will have larger sensor and you will have better image quality that is how your sensor size impacts your image quality next thing is the aspect ratio so whenever they say you have 4 by 3 and 16 by 9 you can see 4 by 3 it has a higher height and 16 by 9 is wider view but then it is cropped from top and bottom so as to bring it to 16 by 9 ratio so you will have larger area coverage in 4 by 3 ratio and smaller area coverage in 16 by 9 ratio as per PAL and NTSC goes, you can see NTSC and PAL are normally the color system which is used. NTSC is used in mostly North America and PAL is normally used in the rest of the part of the world. But whenever you say which one is better, so if you want to produce a video which is going to be widely acceptable, I would recommend to go with NTSC because normally any PAL supported devices will also support NTSC because to just crop the top and bottom and it will be able to bring it into the aspect ratio of 16 by 9. So PAL can always be converted into NTSC but NTSC cannot be converted into PAL. So if you want to use this video for the wider audience, I would ask you to use NTSC as the format. But as per the quality goes, PAL has higher quality because it comes with 625 lines of resolution whereas NTSC has 525 lines only because it is a smaller image. So as per the resolution or quality goes, PAL has better quality and NTSC has a inferior quality than PAL. Not that it is bad, it is just that it is inferior quality with PAL. So that is what aspect ratio and your signal type means. So next thing that it comes with is your TVL value. So normally whenever you say I have 1200 TVL, I have 1000 TVL, what that means is the horizontal pixel resolution. So normally you guys might be hearing about 720p, 1080p, these are the vertical pixel resolution. So it measures the vertical resolution of your image and does not mention about the horizontal resolution 
whenever you say i have 720p that means it is the vertical resolution whenever i say it is 1080p it is the vertical resolution but whenever it comes to this fpv camera normally they tell you the resolution in the format of tvl which is your horizontal pixel of your image so you can see guys 100 tvl is smaller than even 720p so whenever somebody mentions it is 1200 tvl you can say that it is 1200 on to the horizontal pixel not to the vertical pixel so by thumb of rule higher the tvl value higher is the resolution but then possibly your camera will be slower unless it has a faster processor to process that kind of larger image so larger the image normally it takes larger processing power for camera to process that kind of image but then also depends on the speed of the processor so you need to check another specification called response time to check how fast is your camera but as per the camera specification of tvl goes it means the resolution of the image nothing more all right so next thing is your aperture as you can see normally aperture is mentioned in the format of f so whenever you say f 2.0 it is your focal length divided by 2.0 so higher the aperture better is the image clarity and brightness so aperture normally means the opening of your lens that captures the light so larger the aperture larger is the surface area of the lens larger is the capability of that lens to capture the light and focus it onto your image sensor so your image will be more brighter or it will have a better low light performance because it has larger surface area of the lens that is going to capture more light and focus it onto your camera image sensor the next camera specification that they mention whether it is full weather camera it can work only in day it can work only in night so although it is partially dependent upon the aperture and your the quality of image sensor so whenever they say it is a full weather camera basically it just means that it can work in both day and night and so it has a better capability to absorb the light or capture the light during the night and during the day guys it is able to cut the lights of the image so as to capture it nicely so that is how they control so during the day they have to cut the light so as to have enough brightness by increasing the shutter speed which is normally automatically control and during the night guys it has a lower shutter speed or bigger image sensor or wider aperture so as to have better night image so that is what it means so whenever they say it has a noise reduction functionality this is what they means you can see here you do not have a noise reduction here you have a noise reduction so it is 3d dnr it is digital noise reduction what that means is it is going to process this image digitally so as to remove these small dots and make it look nicer this is is nothing more than digital image processing so as to reduce the noise and smoothen the image so this is also one of the nice feature guys which they normally include this is specifically for the low light camera guys so these are all about the features guys and specifications that is normally mentioned on to your camera specifications now let us see quickly how to connect your camera to the flight controller so the first example that here i have is a camera that has a uart function for the menu control guys so you can control the menu option on to your camera camera using the flight controller so here you can see guys since i am using this metexis f765 flight controller it has dual camera support guys so i will be able to control two cameras at the same time so what that means is i will be able to connect two cameras at the same time then i will be able to select the camera which is going to be an active camera right from my flight controller and then using a free uart i will be able to control its menu option so i'm going to tell you guys how to connect two cameras onto this flight controller but guys even if you have one camera that has a uart control for the menu you can use the same example as a template to connect that camera onto your flight controller so here what i have done guys your 5 volt is going to the voltage supply on my flight controller ground to ground for the first camera the similar one for the second camera 5 volt and ground so as to power supply and then you have c1 and c2 as an camera input so your video output from your camera is going to c1 and the second camera is going to c2 and then guys you have tx and rx which will be going which i have connected tx to tx of the camera rx to rx of the camera and then together guys i am going to connect it tx to rx and rx to tx on my flight controller so as to be able to control the menu option of my camera so guys if you have only one camera you don't need to connect the tx and tx and rx and rx for the menu option of the camera you can directly connect the tx to rx and rx to tx onto any free uart that is available onto your flight controller to control the menu option 
So this is how you connect a camera which has a menu option to control with UART. Now let us see another example where you have a menu option inbuilt on your flight controller. So here you can see guys in this camera guys since you have only menu option this kind of camera control cannot happen if you do not have a camera control inbuilt on your flight controller so here i have a speedb f7 version 2 flight controller here you can see it has a camera control pad inbuilt on the flight controller itself so it is the same guys 5 volt to 5 volt ground to ground and video input to video output pin of the camera and then the menu option whether you connect the ground or not is optional but then you can connect the menu option onto this flight controller where it says camera control and then you will be able to use this camera control to control the menu option right from the flight controller using your RC control. So that is it guys. That is how you connect the cameras onto your flight controller. So this is it guys. This concludes the tutorial. I hope you guys like this video. If you guys like this video, please do not forget to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try and answer as soon as possible. If you are new to my channel and not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so that you get the notifications for my new videos. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching and clear skies.